I'm Supermoon Tarot, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about December predictions. As you know, I like to keep a pretty wide open net when it comes to these. So if it's uh, about money and is important to know, or career, or love, where to focus your energy, where to focus your attention, maybe something to be aware of in order to avoid or to change the circumstances to benefit you in a better way. Whatever it is that is the most important is gonna be popping up today. And the thing I love about this is sometimes when we have questions over here in this part of our life, little do we know over here, something that we might have been ignoring or we thought just was uh, not as important, guess what? That could well be the answer for what's going on over here. So whatever it is you need to know, it's going to pop up in the reading today. In addition to that, if you would like to support me, I have a Patreon where I post a ton and I repeat a ton of exclusive content over there. I just posted four new videos. One is about gnomes. The second is a meditation in order to help you communicate with your pets. So you can figure out what each other is saying. And then a meditation to gain some wisdom and communicate with your ancestors. And then the fourth one is a really cool new cleansing I learned of cleansing your like, you know, your space, your room, your house, whatever. Uh, it's sort of metaphysical is the best way I can explain it, but it helped me better understand sort of the layers of consciousness and the layers of energy we perceive when interacting in that kind of way. So that's also there as well. I just, in addition to that, as always, I have an intuition training course and a tarot training course. In the intuition training course, you learn about how to go to the spirit realm, meet your spirit guides, but here's the important part. You learn how the non-physical world and the physical world overlap and how those can be used in a practical everyday way. In the tarot training course, it's very straightforward. You get right into reading tarot. I share all my tips and tricks that I go over here. And in addition to that, it gets you right into reading tarot, simplifies the process, but you don't lose any of the details. And both of those, all of those are available in the description below. But let's get back to our reading. We have four groups in front of us. Group number one, pink opal. Group number two, seafoam calcite. Group number three, black tourmaline. Group number four, Malachite. So you just pick the group that you resonate with most. I highly recommend before you do, think of December. You're putting your energy and intention there. Predictions, you're putting your energy and intention there. Meditate on it just for a second or two before you pick the cards. I'm going to give you a moment to do that. Now that you have, you can go down to the description where you can skip to your designated group with its mark timestamp. And let's get started with group number one. Group number one. Let's look at your December predictions by looking at the cards. We have the Emperor in reversed. We have the Star card in reversed. We have the Two of Swords upright. The Seven of Swords in Reversed. Oh, wow. Okay, two Emperors in Reversed. I'm paying attention. Are you paying attention? <laughs> uh, okay. So the reason why I'm having that reaction before I go into even looking at the details of the cards, now keep in mind, we don't jump, jump to conclusions here. If you are familiar with my tarot course or read tarot yourself, just because a card might seem one way doesn't necessarily mean it is that way. And we're talking about positive or negative. But I always take special notes when we have repeating cards. Uh, this is a huge reason why I'm a big fan of multiple, using multiple decks. Um, but also if it's in the beginning and the ending of a reading, it's like a little sandwich. It's like it's hovering around. Yeah, I'm starting to get images already. Okay, I have a lot of questions right here, guys. I can already see what this is about. But anyways, it's a lot of like everything sort of in Slated. There's a sort of a suffocating note when we have two emperors in reverse here. And I just want to look into what that is and if we can change things. Uh, so just give me one moment to talk to my spirit guides as well as look at all the details myself. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first let's start with the two of swords and the seven of swords. These are both financial related for you. So first off in the two of swords, my spirit guide said that you're going to be making a, a decision, a very it's like very decided and it's important that it's very decided when it comes to money. Um, so in December, this could be anything. And my, and my spirit guide was listing off a bunch of different options. They said um, it could be like you decide, you know what, I'm going to quit my job and go for what really makes me happy because this isn't working anymore. Um, in some cases, it's more of a way you're going about approaching a task within your job. So let's say you're an artist and there is a way that you approach um, a accomplishing the work in front of you and you realize, you know what, this isn't working for me anymore. I need to find something that's a little more streamlined or something that doesn't have more prone to accidents. You see what I'm saying here, but it's something very decisive and there's a feeling of, okay, we're done with that now. So we're not going back to the old method of doing the painting. We're not going back to that old line of work. Whatever that is, there's a very clear, like this isn't working for me anymore type feeling and then needing to make a decision. Now, I just wanna let you know this. Um, this is nothing to freak you out, but sometimes things that happen around us are little like signs or debris, if you will, of debris signs as I'm gonna put them to let you know like you really gotta make that choice. And I was told that if you don't make a decision, if you sort of are like, well, I don't know, maybe, huh? Like kind of going back and forth, because understandably, let's say the decision is to quit your job and that's what you feel. Uh, in let me ask, is this mid-December? I'm feeling so pulled mid-December. They, I was told earlier December, but not right away in the beginning of December. So probably more like the second week, second going into third week. Okay, cool. Um, second to going into the third week is more when you would feel this decision pop up. And like I said, this would be a guttural reaction from you going, I need to change something, whatever that is. That's understandable. You would hesitate to make such a big decision in your life. Or even a hesitation if you have a certain way of going about work and you're like, oh my gosh, finding a whole new way of approaching this project or going about this type of work I do. Oh, that's such a pain. I don't know if I want to do that. But you can feel that decision needing to be made. If you sort of don't make that decision, you take too long, around you there will be some, the way my spirit guide described it as funky things happening to your money until you make that decision. These are sort of the, hey, this problem's not going away, you got to deal with it. But keep in mind, once you make that decision, those little weird things happening around your money will get fixed and everything's cool. But keep in mind, they don't have to happen in the first place if you're decisive and you make that decision. But it is popping up and it's needing to be made and you will know when it happens. And like I said, there's a versatility when it comes to this for everybody. You'll figure out what works for you in that moment. What's your big change? Now going on from that concept, this one's really interesting. Um, this is both a compliment, but also a funny warning within itself as well. So on in the Seven of Swords in reverse, my spirit guide said that you're going to be finding in December things that you sort of mentioned or put out into the universe before, maybe like a couple months ago, a couple weeks ago. It wouldn't have been that very long ago. I'm just double checking with my spirit guide. No, that long ago, not that long ago at all. They said, okay, okay agreed. So, um, when you have maybe mentioned an idea to someone in December, you would see them playing out that idea as their own and, and working on something with it. Maybe you have kind of casually mentioned to the universe, oh, I would like that thing to happen. Suddenly that idea has come to light. Like maybe you wished a certain type of collaboration between mu uh, music artists and then a concert pops up and those two music artists are working together in a way you hadn't anticipated. And you're like, whoa, I had wanted that to happen. That type of thing. So the part where it's the warning and also a compliment is my spirit guide basically said that Things have a way of catching up to you, idea-wise, and what you're putting out into the universe. And we're saying this in a positive way. These are fun things that are coming your way um, when you see them popping up throughout December. The things that you've mentioned or had interest towards or gave an, uh, inspiration to, you'll see them popping up around you in these various ways in December. But this would have been time periods that you didn't think you were doing anything. You didn't think that 
you know, you were adding anything of value, maybe in defining it in that kind of way. And this is to let you know, like, even when I love how my circuit put, they said, even when you think you're not doing anything, you actually still are, because you're essentially throwing out to the universe these little seeds, if you will. And you might not realize they're sprouting into something. And you feel sort of detached from them, if you will. So you have no investment of how they'll uh, come to be. And yet they still do. So the part where it's a little bit of a warning is, and again, this is not very serious. That word is too strong of a word to describe this idea. But my spirit said, you're going to waste time having these epiphanies where you're like, whoa, I mentioned that before. And now it's like a week or two or maybe two months later. And here it is. It's popping up right in front of me. I didn't even have to do anything. Wow, isn't that cool? And you sort of have an epiphany. Maybe you don't even fully realize that you are creating it and bringing it into your atmosphere. And then you don't really do anything with that. So you just keep putting out more seeds, putting out more ideas. They keep coming back to you. And you keep going through that cycle over and over and over again. Oh, wow, wasn't that cool? Wow, that came to be awesome. And you're not allowing yourself to be more self-aware of the process, and you're sort of wasting your own time. Again, no major consequences here, except that you're wasting your time. And what I mean by that when I say that is, the more you're self-aware of how much power you have, even when it feels like nothing's going on, nothing's happening for you, and yet you speak and it comes to be, the more you can be like, okay, well, then that means I'm always doing something of value. That means at every given moment, all my fun ideas and inspiration will eventually positively happen. And so in the meantime, before I can understand the hows and the whys, especially for little things that maybe you don't have as dedicated as a goal to, because many people, I don't want to speak for everyone, but most people in life want their careers to work out a certain way. They want their love life to work out a certain way and usually something to do with their emotions. And I would argue a fourth that I don't hear people mention enough, but often, you know, your spiritual connection, stuff like that and growing as an individual in that kind of way. Whatever that may be, we talk about those things, but these little tiny things that you would like, maybe a particular cute jacket, you'd like some form of fun activity to come your way, but you don't quite know how to put it into words or what it would be, that type of thing. So you no longer seeing that as like a fun synchronicity, but realizing that you're successfully bringing something into the universe with little effort, you'll start to use that to your advantage. You'll start to build a trust with yourself and the universe. You'll start to build confidence. You'll start to realize that you at all given times are abundant and are always creating. And the more you become become self-aware of it, the more you can interact with it, the more you can escalate it, make it grow. You see what I'm saying here? Why just go through the circle over and over and over again when you can fully acknowledge it and then basically harness it to its fullest, greatest uh, power and ability that you have? So basically it's a compliment train, but a compliment train where in December, sometimes when we, um, how do I say this? Like we need to see it happen in front of us to mentally and emotionally and spiritually build that connection that it's happening. And then it clicks for us much better. And because it clicks for us better, then we can properly harness it because we're fully on the believe train of ourselves. You see what I'm saying here? So basically you're gonna make a decision when it comes to money. You're gonna see things around you. Oh, let me just double check one thing. Okay, yeah, I was just double checking. I was like, how is this associated with money? Because my spirit guide was saying this is money related. They said it's money related because you can use this to your advantage when it comes to making money and attracting things in your life when it comes to money, whether that be just more money itself or an idea that can then make you more money, that type of thing. Anyways, um, or, you know, keep this in mind too. Other people might enjoy those ideas and that's not a negative thing you always have more ideas but keep in mind how much value you're offering yourself others just by existing and expressing yourself so keep that in mind now going on we have the emperor card and it does get foreshadowed here um so the way my spirit guide put this is um there is somebody sort of like looming around you um, they're in your space, you know they're there, and they're very controlling, I was told. But the problem is that this domineering energy is kind of cute to you. Like it's kind of attractive. Um, I was told for many cases, uh, not all, but many, it is a romantic connection. 
but you're just like, oh, that's so nice. I love this. Uh, uh, I can see they're being dominating. Ooh, I'm really into that kind of thing. But unbeknownst to you, their level of, um, they're really trying to control you, the situation. It, it's not healthy. It's not good. I am being told, and I want to be clear about this, I rarely ever say this. It rarely pops up in the cards. It's usually like, you know, choice be your own kind of thing. But I was told by my spirit guide, break it off. It's, it's not going to be cute in the long run, essentially. You're gonna, in the long term, realize how serious the controlling aspect is. And it's very intense. It's kind of hanging out around you. You're aware of it, but you're just not aware of the magnitude of what it is. And I was told that you're not aware of their being controlling. It's kind of this vibe where you're like, oh yeah, they have kind of like an intense energy or like they're kind of, um, around my space but no they're not they're not that way they're not doing because you don't realize the decisions they're sort of guiding you towards or things they're doing around the scenes around you forcing your hand unbeknownst to you or your circumstance so that's just um something to be aware of in december um pretty you know it's popping up twice so you can see the intensity around it um keep that in mind now last final thing to keep in mind this is kind of an interesting part in the star card. Um, this is just something to keep in mind throughout the whole month with pretty much everything. So the way my spirit guide was describing it is, see how because the star card is upside down, this bird is flying, but instead of flying to the sky, they're flying down below to the stars, which is on the lower half. Then we have over here this individual pouring water, but the water is going up to the sky. So the way my spirit guide literally said, they said it's kind of like opposite day. And they said, this is pretty much how the month is going to work for you. Not in a, nothing bad kind of way, just now that you can be aware of December, you can use it to your advantage. So pretty much my spirit guide was saying that like, Things that you think will work out one way traditionally are going to do the opposite. What you think is traditionally the way you would handle things, you're going to do the opposite. Maybe sometimes you're, you're used to inclined to working harder. In this circumstance, you're going to try the least. Maybe in some cases you kind of just um, uh, like to go for a more fun approach. Maybe this is a little more of a serious moment. That type of thing. You're going to bounce around from circumstance to circumstance, but it is a multifaceted part of every part of of the way you're interacting and living life and interacting with people, um, the way you're approaching projects, any single thing you can think of all throughout December. So initially I have a feeling and an inkling, let me just double check with my spirit guide. <laughs> my spirit guide was like, yes, they're definitely gonna do that. I have a feeling that going into December, you might not initially connect to this, like initially like maybe not fully believe it so you'll sort of go about your normal way of reacting things normal way of approaching projects whatever you think discernibly moment to moment situation to situation and you'll find that it turns out the opposite than what you had initially thought and you would get back in return and then you'll quickly be like oh yeah so it is opposite month okay cool then i will Every time I think this is the way I should approach it, I will then choose to do the opposite. And you'll just have like a fun month exploring things in a totally different way. Um, it doesn't mean it will be more difficult or anything like that in the least. It's just approaching things, even anything from conversations to the work ethic, so on and so forth. So love that for you. It makes things a lot less confusing and you can be in on it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed your reading, Pink Opal, uh, group number one. Uh, please leave a comment, a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm wishing you the best. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And let's get ready for group number two. Group number two. Let's look at your December predictions by looking at the cards. We have nine of wands in reverse. Ten of cups in reverse. Seven of Pentacles upright, the Two of Pentacles in reverse, and the Ace of Cups in reverse. Okay. Wow, this is a lot. Uh, give me just one moment to look at the details of everything and consult my spirit guides.
Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we're going to be going over some things that might initially not sound great, but they actually are. They are actually wonderful. <laughs> Sometimes we go over things that are difficult to talk about or not fun initially to hear about in order to change things. And it's like, oh, forewarning this, no worries, though, we can change that situation. This is more like... Um, not a warning, just like, hey, it could appear this way, but it's actually this, and it's a good thing, it's like a sign. Well, it's not like a sign, it is a sign, move over here, you know what I mean, that type of thing. But also, this is one of those fun readings where we have two things that almost appear as a contradiction popping up, and that's the thing about the human experience. Uh, pretty much everything you do has a dualistic message and tone going on here. So keep that in mind, we're gonna be focusing on one concept, and then you'll notice me talking about something else that almost appears, it contradicts it, but remember, you are a multifaceted person. There are many things happening at once. In some areas in your life, you're meant to be more still, in other areas, you're meant to be more lively. Just as an example, not in this particular reading, I'm just giving an example. So going forward with that idea, you're gonna really love how this all turns out. Um, so first we're going to start with the nine of wands in reverse and the ten of cups in reverse. Now if you were familiar with my tarot course where you read tarot yourself just because something is in reverse doesn't mean we need to read it in reverse. Now I am being told by my spirit guide that this card is not being read in reverse but then you say well, well then why is it in reverse? Because sometimes cards need to be in reverse in order to create an interaction between cards so that you know that they are so I was consulting my spirit guide. They said this is being read upright, but is interacting with the Ten of Cups. So first off, um, you again, this is going to sound negative at first, but stick with me here. In the Ten of Cups um, in reverse, there is an unhappiness that strikes up. And I want to be specific about this. This is more you tuning in with yourself and being like, I don't really love what I'm doing. I don't really find happiness in it. Um, this could be, let me just double check with my spirit guide if this is specific or a range of things. Okay, my, my spirit guide went like this. They went very specific. It's what you do for a living. And this is you just being like, I don't really like this. This isn't really making me happy or fulfilling that part of myself that gets excited about what I'm doing. And I do want to put out some, um, just a thought. Uh, we always um, say that what we are doing in the long term has to be this dream concept and idea. But many people find great happiness in their jobs, even if like, let's say they wanted to be a musician, but instead they work somewhere in the ladder in an office job. But over time, they're like, you know what, I really like the way I get to manage things and organize it and they find a happiness in it. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't always necessarily mean your dream thing or same kind concept below, uh, uh, going on from that, it's like, yeah, maybe you wanted to be a musician, but you actually find out you really like writing music more than you want to be um, a musician performing, going on the road, uh, finding uh, your success in that kind of individual way. So keep that in mind. But anyways, going forward, you're just not really pumped about what you're doing. And what kicks that off, we're talking about motivation, and motion, motivation is very important, is the nine of wands being read upright. So upright like that. Now, what happens is when we have that nine of wands energy, this is somebody who's been working for a while. It's been difficult. It's been kind of a struggle. Maybe you've had to deal with some obstacles, but you've always managed to have success and push through. Keep that concept in mind when we come back to the seven of pentacles in this reading. And so in one, in some ways, it's a compliment that you, no matter what is in front of you, you move forward and make it happen. And in the nine of wands, there's even this feeling of like, you're almost at the end of what you've been working towards in receiving that ultimate concept, like maybe that next promotion, um, maybe a very specific job within your field, whatever it is. But keep in mind that sort of slog type of energy, that walking up a hill type of vibe, it suddenly triggers inside you this feeling where you're like, what am I doing? This isn't fun. I, I don't know if I really want to 
do this anymore. I mean, look at this imagery of somebody who's a bit tattered. They're like, do I want this moving forward? And I asked my spirit guide, I said, well, because they are so close to this thing they want, should they still try to achieve it? And my spirit guide essentially said that you're being put into a position, this um, tapped in initially like feeling unhappy and bummed out about what you're doing is a good thing because it's the indicator that you're pulling yourself down the wrong path. Now, I don't want to think about that concept of path too big of a deal, like destiny, what you're meant to do and how you're meant to affect the world and all that. We're going to take that down in less intensity tone. We're more focusing on this concept that like, yeah, you could look at all the different versions of who you could be through different timelines. This isn't your path you're really meant to go on. And while you can achieve it, then you're going to be kind of more not stuck on the path. It's more like, you know, when you get there, there's a part of yourself that negotiates with yourself. That's like, yeah, well, I put in all this effort to be here. Do I want to leave? So it's like you could get there. You're really close to getting that final thing, but then you'll feel more obligated to stay there. So this is you checking in with yourself in December and going, you know what? I'm meant to do something differently. Something that does get me excited. Something where it doesn't feel like I'm constantly going through obstacles. You know, I want it to be easy. It should feel easy. And many people who are going down their paths don't see the things that come up, even as obstacles, but just something new, fun to learn and so on and so forth. So again, initially sounds a negative, but this is you checking in with yourself and going, I gotta change things up. This isn't me. And I wanna do something that is me. Now, going forward, though, we have the two of pentacles in reverse. Now, I want you to look at this imagery, this very beautiful imagery of the cat. And as you can tell, the two pentacles are in their eyes. Now, my spirit guide said this was representing this idea of where you're focusing your attention. And we're going to think of this metaphorically as your left and right side, you know, your uh, more fluid, intuitive side that can just kind of sense what's needed next in a situation, career or otherwise. And then this other side of you that's like, well, logically, um, I could make a list. These are things that usually need to be watched out for or anticipated and combining those two. And you have a really good way of looking at both and keeping your eye on the prize to keep this sense of balance. Because that's the main concept of the two pentacles. Really, whenever we're multitasking in life and we're always multitasking to be fair there's always this like checking in with yourself and saying where do i feel i need to go and what where am i actually needed and bouncing around between those two and you're very good at this this is compliment city going on here um from my spirit guides and technically through the stream of yours and everything like that but uh the thing is though it's in reversed now this is not necessarily a bad thing i want to keep this in mind people um I don't know if this is spoken about it enough, but I just want to put this out there. You're always evolving. So that means the way that you process information or approach manifesting or anything is going to change and evolve with you. Because that makes sense. You're not the same person you were a year ago, vice versa, five years ago, and who you will be 10 years from now. So things need to evolve with you. So when it's in reverse, this starts to show a feeling of imbalance. Like it's it's not a big deal, thankfully. Um, right, let me just double check my spirit guides. Yeah, not a big deal at all. These my spirit guide was like, like, not a big deal. But the thing is, when we have that two of pentacles in reverse, this is when we start to notice things are a little off in imbalances and it, it can pop up and manifest in like little accidents, you forgot something, you spill a coffee, nothing major, nothing that's going to stress you out. But these are your clues and signals that something's off. Now, in your particular case, it's not because you didn't have your eye on the prize, but this is your sign from the universe that you're going to need to now try out something different. And this is your sign of saying you're going to have to loosen your grip in the way you approach things. Instead of, and this is how my spirit guide put it, they said instead of you having your eyes and you're controlling and focusing, there's like a clear conscious effort of like looking at these two different avenues, you're less thinking and more feeling. So same concept, you're still bouncing between that feeling intuitively, but you can even feel with logic too, if you can believe it or not. It's, it's um, not always based on making a list and having this almost uh, inner narrative guiding you and being like, I feel I should do this. I know I should do this. You're going to kind of remove that dialogue from your head and you're going to take each moment 
for e- e- what is needed in that next second. And sometimes that it's in when you register in that moment, and you take a step forward into your future and, and you're in and you're in that moment. You quickly are looking around and you are like, oh, I see there's a list. Um, and let me check if anyone's worked with the list. And then all of a sudden you're just in there. You can't explain why, but you realize something is needed. And you're like, you know, I just feel it in my gut. This is anticipated. That would be using that other part of yourself. So again, same concept you're just kind of kind of get out of your head and explore this on what i would describe a more psychic level and again just to reiterate so it's perfectly clear what i'm trying to express so instead of thinking and narrating to yourself you're just taking each moment by moment and then going still between that part of yourself that isn't forcing the narrative in your head but either feeling when you need that part of yourself that's more hands-on proactive like literal sense and that part of you that just needs to um, pop up like energetically get something done like like, behind the scenes and be supportive that kind of thing So again, you're just trying a whole different way of approaching. If you have a list in your hands, you're going to tear that up, put that behind you. Remember, we're going from moment to moment in order to do that. Same concept still with the, the balancing, just balancing in a different way. Now, moving forward, though, we have the Ace of Cups in reverse. Now, I was told a relationship is going to be ending. And it's going to be making room for what's over here on the Seven of Pentacles. Now, the good thing is the relationship ending is... It's not very serious, I was told. It's a um, very short relationship, very romantic or friendship. Hold on, let me just double check on my spare guides. Um, I'm told both because um, this is a uh, general reading. So in as in it can go for either side in this one, um, depending on who you are. So it's going to be ending. But this is a good thing. This is on purpose to make room for here in the Seven of Pentacles. And now this is what I meant when I said you're going to notice this sense of contradiction. But remember, it's not a contradiction. It's two things existing at the same time. We're talking about more dualistic in relationship. So the Seven of Pentacles is a compliment again to you. We talk about how you're so on top of yourself with how you handle things and multitasking. You're somebody that can move forward down the wrong path and still make it happen. And in the Seven of Pentacles, that's that energy of moving forward and always knowing what to do and making the right decision, even when you aren't even quite sure yourself i would definitely say the seven of pentacles is like checking in with yourself every now and then nothing's necessarily going wrong but you're like i don't even know if i'm doing the right thing because the seven of pentacles is a compliment saying you're doing the right thing keep doing it it's gonna add up you're going to build towards something but there's not necessarily a reward or recognition happening now so that's where that inner dialogue comes in where you're like doing your thing you're vibing again we're using an example of your work you're going about approaching things organizing things coming up with ideas you haven't heard from anyone that it's building you towards this promotion or field or opportunity yet you're not aware of it yet but and because without the reassurance that's when it causes the inner monologue of saying like am i doing it right but the reason why this individual is leaving your life is to make room for you to not second guess what you're doing so no matter where you're focusing your attention you just always seem to know how to handle it make decisions knowing when to be more proactive, knowing when more to lean back and be on that daily grind of just your regular mediocrity, daily little chores, whatever you need to do to accomplish your tasks and stuff like that. And you're in just a natural flow with whatever you want to go forward in your goals. Even if the goals end up not being ultimately where you want to go, you just have this way of navigating spaces in order to move forward. Now, you might not, like I said, With it being Seven of Pentacles, you're not always aware that you're moving forward and you are being observed and um, people aren't voicing yet, but they are acknowledging you're doing a good job behind the scenes to one another. That's very much that type of energy. Let me just double check that with my spirit guide. My spirit guide said, yes, that's absolutely correct. Awesome. Okay, cool. So 
This is you saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this great energy I have. I'm going to choose a different path. I'm even going to integrate some new methods in it. And I'm just going to keep moving forward and going towards my dreams and goals. But because you're not getting this recognition to your face immediately right now in December, this individual kind of like you're hanging out with them, you're vibing, you start to think, hmm, they have a nice job or they seem to be making certain comments. Maybe I'm not even, maybe I should be approaching things differently. Little do you know, no, 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 you're actually doing great. You're doing fantastic. You keep doing, don't get distracted by anything. Keep going about how you're doing it. You're just changing where you want to focus your energy for your own happiness, but you literally can make what you don't even want to happen, happen. That's how in it you are, so to speak. So again, initially these things can, and this is just something to think about whenever you're enjoying tarot, even for yourself. Just because cards seem like they're going one way doesn't necessarily mean that is ultimately the end, you know, reading and concept. We had a lot of things here that started off kind of like, Ew, and then changed to being like, oh, so keep that in mind, even in your own life. Uh, tarot is a great way to desensitize the way we initially respond to things and build up a different relationship with how we interact with it. So just keep that in mind. I'm very happy for you. Um, ultimately, we just spent this whole reading complimenting you, and I'm all about that. <laughs> I am very excited for you to try out some new methods and how you approach multitasking. I'm excited for you to find out what you really want to do. And remember, you're doing things fantastic. And some things that seem like they're ending doesn't mean you're stagnant. You might not be able to see that momentum going forward yet and realize it based on the approval of others, but it's happening. We're giving approval now. <laughs> So anyways, please leave a comment, a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. I am wishing you the best. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And let's get ready for group number three. Group number three. Let's look at those December predictions by looking at the cards. We have seven of swords upright. The Chariot in Reverse, the Six of Pentacles Upright, the Ten of Cups in Reverse, and the Queen of Cups in Reverse. Okay, give me just one moment to look at all the details and consult my spirit guides. Okay. <laughs> I love this. Um, this is a very fantastic month for you, which I'm very excited about, but we are going to be going over some things so you can best process them is the best way I can play, put it. So first we're going to start with the Seven of Swords, which is uh, working with the Chariot in Reverse in conjunction. So in the Seven of Swords upright, you are represented here, and I love how my spirit guide put it. They said, this individual is not blinded by the information she has gained. She is still able to keep an eye on her surroundings. And I further ask questions about that. This is a great way, um, if you were familiar with my intuition training course and you're familiar with talking to your spirit guides, you always want to dig deeper because you're given a little bit of information and you're meant to break it down a little more. So this is just an example of breaking it down. So first off, these swords are representing information that my spirit guide said you're going to be very proactive in December. You're going to be looking for what you need to know. You're going to easily, easily be able to gain that information. I was being shown also a lot of imagery of like, you know, when you just have questions and you keep Wikipediaing everything, it's that kind of vibe of just like, huh, I wonder about that. I want to know that. And you find yourself not just being like, huh, I wish I knew this or I wonder that and then not 
looking into it. You're actively looking into it. You're easily gaining that information and it is of use. It's very exciting for you. Um, it's the type of information where like, I'd, personally, I am happy to say that there is no useless information. It always seems to come to the surface at some point in time that you will use, whether in conversation or for something of inspiration or whatever. But in this particular case, December is a month where the information feels a little more like usable and obviously usable and obviously inspiring. It's that type of vibe. Let me just double check with my spirit guide. <laughs> my spirit guide was like, this is absolutely correct. Keep telling them that. So uh, now why is that important? This idea of not being distracted by this information. So while you are enjoying all of this and you're enjoying the process and you're going to be using it to your advantage, when we talk about environment, who is coming into your environment? We have the chariot in reverse. This is an individual, my spirit guide says, kind of wants to mess with you a little bit. Now, the good news is you're going to see them coming a mile away. And when I talk about the idea of being aware of your environment, you're not only able to speak spot them coming into your environment and you're not only able to spot their intentions but based on how they express themselves and I'm going to be clear about that concept in one moment compared to the reality that is in the environment mixed with the information you know you know that what they have to say doesn't hold any weight and it doesn't make you confused or doubt yourself or you're just not even distracted by it for a moment, keeping that in mind. So it's both a compliment in your new excitement and success, but keep in mind you're not so lost in it. You are you don't see this person sort of sneaking up on you, if you will. Now, when we talk about them messing with you, they come in with what... Um, here, I'm going to do the best I can to explain this. Have you ever met people that play devil's advocate so much? And please sound off in the comments below. To the point that they're actually not making a point. And you could even argue that they're kind of more making, like they're implying they're playing all teams, but they're really trying to point you towards a more doubtful negative side or taking the side of, you know, um, an individual that is more like like it's like it's like let's say you're saying hey this person was unkind to me and they're like well what about them and that to be fair when you're getting the bigger picture it is good to see all sides and understand where people are coming from in order to better process and move on from a situation or not to take it as uh, to heart as um easily but there is a point where it's like okay i hear what you're saying but are you on my side or not do you see what I'm saying? It's that type of devil's advocate coming in. Keep in mind, though, I do want to put it out here. I am the biggest, biggest advocate myself um, with duality. Duality is in all parts of life. Um, there really are multiple sides and, and things that might initially come across as contradictive, always working with each other in this beautiful balance. So I want to be clear, multiple things can be true and are true at the same time. But we know what we're talking about when we talk about this type of person. They're acting like they're playing all sides or they're seeing the bigger picture, but there's a much more smaller intention and smaller mind behind all of those words. Now, when they come in with this sort of what, again, it's not like them initially bugging you. They're not saying anything cruel. So it can, you could see how it could easily, if you're not thinking about it, kind of pop into your environment. You're so excited and distracted by all this cool new stuff. December is a very like informative month for you. You're having a grand old time, feeling very passionate about this process and excitement and the excitement. It feels so good when you just get something instantly like that and so easily. And they come in just sharing their opinions. You're not even realizing it. And then before you know it, the way that they're expressing all these different sides and that way of approaching life with their intentions behind a well-meaning process, this, if it was another individual, if it was another circumstance, it could make you start to doubt your own process, your own information. What are you doing? Should you consider something else? Are you one way because you view one thing? Do you see what I'm saying? Now, the good news for you is because you are not so lost in your information, you're still aware of what's going on around you, who you are as an individual, the reality of the circumstance. You see them 
popping up a mile away and their words sort of fall flat. Keep in mind, when we're talking about how they're being posed, we have the chariot in reversed. This is somebody who is unable to move forward because they're not sure which way to go. So they're literally projecting onto you their insides. They're trying to project all of, as you can see, our individual here is moving on from the situation. You're moving on in life. You're moving forward. You're gaining stuff. You're doing great. There's a sense of momentum to you in December. There could be some jealousy there, let's be real. And uh, I'm not saying it's necessarily the cards, but um, people subconsciously can project themselves this way. And they're trying to bring that into your environment. And you're like, no, 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 <laughs> I see you. <laughs> so follow that gut and intention when you do spot it. Um, don't really give it, a, you don't need to hear what they have to say. Um, you're not an unkind person by setting boundaries and honestly wanting to focus your attention where you are happy. So this is basically saying a combination of like, you're going to, this is the confirmation of both. You're going to be fine and you'll be, you'll be able to so spot it, but we are pointing it out. So you're extra aware of this individual in order, in order to, prevent any slight hiccup or bump as we'll kind of label them from coming in your momentum and good vibes and easiness and proactiveness and inspiration. So moving on from there, we have this going on in the Ten of Cups in Reverse and the Queen of Cups in Reverse. Again, this is a beautiful um, idea I talk about in my tarot training course. And just if you're a tarot reader yourself already, just because cards are in reverse or maybe initially seem negative doesn't mean they are at face value what they are. So investigating further and talking to my spirit guide. I love this. This is really beautiful. So in the Ten of Cups in Reverse, there is an emotional moment for you um, in December. So this is where it's kind of a um, uno reverse or not what it seems kind of uh, thing. And again, it talks about that dualistic combination of two things being true at the same time. So many good things are happening to you in December, like a lot of good stuff comes your way and is just building up. And you just have this moment. I'm kind of getting hold on a second I have to like keep it together sometimes the energy from the cards seeps through very intensely um you, so many good things are coming your way to the point that it feels overwhelming and it goes from just like oh I feel grateful to being like I don't know how to process this because that's sometimes how it is when you've been through oh my gosh I'm gonna cry Sometimes you've been through things for such a long time. By the time you get what you want, you're not really sure what to do with it. And I'm happy to say this is a confirmation that you will not self-sabotage. You're going to be okay. Mostly what's influencing it is over here in the Queen of Cups in reverse, which does talk about an emotional imbalance. But I want to be clear, it's not just labeling and saying something like, oh, you're emotionally imbalanced at this time. You have gotten such an influx during December of great things. And when we're talking about things, we're talking about like anything from opportunities to enjoying your friendships and your loved ones and gifts and fun things and inspiration and knowledge and all of this insight and everything coming together all such at a fast speed. You haven't maybe caught up to quite yet. You will get there. It's nothing to judge yourself for processing the past and how that's hurt you and maybe where you were previously. So you know how things have a fun way of popping their way up to the surface when you least anticipate it, that type of thing. So that's basically what happens is you're just a little emotionally imbalanced. So it's so much good energy coming your way. You kind of have a moment of going like, oh my gosh, do I even deserve this? What's happening? I don't even know what to do. I don't know if I can handle this and like have a breakdown. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this. Have that breakdown. This is both the confirmation that you will not self-sabotage any of the momentum and good things coming your way. But my spirit guide suggests because you're sort of still process processing things from this mindset and everything, take a moment to just sort of be neutral 
And neutral in this sense doesn't mean not crying. It means not giving this full force and will and energy towards something negative, all of these what ifs. What you're going to do is you're just going to cry. You're going to cry. You're going to let it out. You're just going to express that you're overwhelmed, whether it be to a friend or yourself. And you're just going to take that sort of like, that cry is a neutral space. You're not moving towards any other direction. You're not making actions off of it. You're just going to let it all out. Take a moment to breathe. Maybe take a nap. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good nap? Especially a cry nap. <laughs> Sound off in the comments below. <laughs> but when you express that, that will sort of put you back in the right headspace to be like, okay, this is a lot, but I'm just going to keep allowing myself to receive and I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing moving forward. Again, you will not self-sabotage this, but not only is this the confirmation you won't self-sabotage, you won't self-sabotage it by taking a moment, letting yourself express it all, Express it in that neutral way where you're not making definitive statements of what ifs and just let it out. You don't even have to fully like say, I should be grateful. Nothing neutral. We're talking neutral in the middle. Just cry and let it out and then keep moving forward and you're going to do great. It's going to be really fun. It's both like a blessing and like, look how great your month is going. But yes, there is a moment where you're processing that. And that's okay. This is, we're talking about this so you can keep that momentum going. So much momentum for you in December. Now, last but not least, we have six of pentacles. Now, I love this for you. This is super on the nose depending on what you celebrate, but this does literally talk about gift giving, which is really cute. Now, I love this. This has a subtext, uh, as you, if you're familiar with my tarot training course, we're always looking for a subtext. So again, my spirit guide said, when you are, um, you're going to have a really good gift giving month. You're going to feel the want and desire to gift give. So the subtext then becomes, oh, you're doing financially well. I double checked my spirit guide. Oh, are they doing very well? And my spirit guide said, yes. I are they doing well enough where after they give money, they're not going to be in a state mentally where they're like, oh, I spent too much money. And I was told, no, let me just double check one more time. Nope, you'll be absolutely fine. But also it's this, again, this sense of connection, the sense of love, finding the right gift, that type of all coming together. Again, let me just double check. Okay, cool, perfect. <laughs> My circuit's like, you're doing fantastic. Keep going. Um, so keep that in mind. That's how we're getting extra subtext. And I was just confirming it with my spirit guide. But when we talk about um, you being um, being a gift giver, it's not just because of the month. And again, depending on what you celebrate, it's that you're doing financially well, you're happy, you feel like you're in a state of mind to be able to give and in a healthy state of mind because some people overgive themselves and not in a good way. This is all beautifully coming together to say that's how good your blessings are in the 10 of cups in reverse. Yep, in reverse. That's how solid it is that you're in a position to um, financially, mentally, and emotionally share with other individuals. So it's going to be a very exciting time for you to make those type of connections. And it's basically saying like, you don't have to stress about money or anything like this, like treat your, treat your loved ones. You can do it. You'll be okay. Vibe, enjoy that process and all that good jazz. And essentially it's just going to be a very big momentous, but definitely an emotional month, but not like in a bad way. Um, not that a, any emotion is negative, but for sure, like a month of of just being like everything's great oh my god i'm crying oh my god everything's amazing i'm doing so well whoa this is a lot i but i'm so appreciative so it's gonna be fun in it's gonna be a roller coaster but in a good way it'll be super cathartic and relieving and lots of receiving so i love that for you so please um give this video a like, leave your comments below. I'd be happy. I always am happy reading them and uh, hit that notification bell and subscribe button. So you don't miss any of my videos. I am wishing you the best. I'm very happy for your December. I will see you in the next one and let's get ready for our final group. Group number four, group number four. Let's look at your December predictions by looking at the cards. We have eight of swords in reverse, page of cups upright, six of swords in reverse, eight of cups 
upper, I already like this interaction. And the five of wands in reverse. Interesting. Um, yeah, I can already see a theme happening here. But before I go into that, let me just look at the details and consult my spirit guides before I go into anything. Yeah, I was right. Um, if I were to put a theme or like a defining word of December, I would describe it as freedom. There is sort of an exhalation, but also an aggression behind it in a good way. Like sometimes we got to take our freedom, you know what I mean? And that's definitely what's going on here. So let's get into um, all the details. So first, let's start off with the eight of cups upward. Now we've got a spider you know what is so cool about spiders they are often related spiritually to this idea of self-empowerment but it's a very specific vibe because you know whenever we talk about any concept sometimes there's a tone behind it that is different compared to another version of the same word same concept in this self-empowerment vibe it's like maybe you've been through something for a while and you're tired of it, and you're like, you know what? No, I'm done. I'm done, I'm changing things, or I deserve this, or whatever that is. So it's this allowance, like you're saying to yourself, I'm forcing this other stuff out of my life in order to energetically make myself available to be empowered. So it's more than just falling into it. It's like, you know what, I've seen the light for myself. <laughs> you know, it's that type of vibe. But if you notice, uh, she's got a beautiful web going on here. And this web has all these beautiful cups. Now the Eight of Cups is an incredibly awesome card. Uh, it usually talks about this idea of momentum, moving forward, moving, um, usually it often has to relate to spiritually moving forward as we talk about this. But it's got a bit of that Nine of Cups flared to it. So my spirit guide was saying that these different cups represent this idea of good opportunities and positive things, just like an awesome month happening for you in December. But it's a little different than the um, idea of manifesting or even the Nine of Cups energy by itself, which is very much like things falling into your lap. Now, technically, manifesting is a proactive thing and you are reaching and moving towards it. But like the Eight of Cups, traditionally, this idea of you're actively walking towards it. Think of yourself as your own personal web. And whatever you're interacting with, the good stuff is going to literally stick to that web. And as December continues, eventually your web's going to be really full of continuously good things falling into your lap. And remember, sticking. So let's say you really enjoyed... Um, Maybe you were purchasing like some coffee or something like that or uh, some food and the person behind the counter, the cashier was really friendly and you had like a nice interaction. It made your day. It's like you're, can, you get that stuck in your web, you keep attracting it. So the idea behind December is, yes, you are still welcome to manifest things, but you're not waiting around for them to happen. Instead, you're going to keep putting yourself actively in environments where you're happy. Actively in better environments, like if you know an area in your life isn't going to be a good time, you're going to migrate somewhere else where you think it might be a good time. You're going to focus your attention, no matter the situation, negative or positive, towards what did you like, what did get you excited, and you're going to stick it to your web, and your web's going to be quite full of good things. But remember, this is a great way, I always talk about this on this channel, but when we manifest or create the world around us, it's going to change from person to person, we're evolving, so maybe every couple weeks or months we need to change up the method this is a perfect example of sometimes you need to put yourself in that circumstance to get, have it stick to you and bring it towards you and it's just a different way of looking at things so again self-empowerment the sense of like i'm done but you're going to actively go out of your way to notice good things you're going to go out of your way to also put yourself in better situations and the beautiful thing is they're going to stick and it's going to keep that in your web it's going to keep that happening to you so we love that for you now going on though 
when we talk about negative positive situations, we do have the five of wands in reverse. So there is a confrontation I see coming up amongst many people. That's what my spirit guide said, because with the five of wands, because it's a confrontation based card, it could be with one person. I mean, it can be so varied, but I did foresee and my spirit guide did confirm there are multiple people going on in here, like a couple. And the thing is, if I want to put this card upright, just so we're in, um, the imagery makes more sense before we talk about the reversal meaning. So as you can tell, they all have different masks on. Each wand is representing a different individual and each one is wearing a mask. I love how my spirit guide put this. They said, each individual is not really putting themselves out there. Now remember, it's not because they are on purpose trying to lie. I mean, they could be, but this is more of that feeling of, unfortunately, self-hatred, thinking they need to be a certain way. You know, they put a mask onto, uh, onto themselves, to the world, because they think that's what's needed for the circumstance, the situation. Maybe they play a certain role in your life and they think they need to play it in a certain way. Whatever it is, when we have a five of wands situation, normally it's the type of situation where no one's going to win because no one is willing to back down from their point of view. So it just is this roundabout type of thing going back and forth. Also, five of wands situations tend to be very enticing. They say the right line, just enough to make you want to engage and go one more thing. This is the last thing I'm going to say. And you can't help it. They keep engaging you and keep engaging you. And the problem that you're not aware of is you can't take the bait. You can't take the engagement. It's not going to go anywhere. And unfortunately, nobody's really willing to listen to each other. And then the problem gets more complex in this confrontation. Keep in mind, this is we're going to move this towards a positive direction, I'm happy to say. But it gets more complicated when no one is really on top of all of what we just discussed, really putting the authentic version of themselves and what they truly want deep down to the table to beginning with. So it's a bunch of nonsense altogether. It just none of it makes sense. Nobody has the right direction. Do, have you ever been in that situation? Please put in the comments below. But the point is, it's that kind of roundabout situation. Now, it's important for us to understand that it is a five of wands situation and you're not really going to find common ground in this circumstance. And it's good to know where they're coming from because there is a sense of compassion we can have for individuals. It's frustrating, but we can understand, okay, I see. So you're still going through your own, you know, issues. You're still working stuff out. Okay, I understand. I see that you're going through that. That doesn't mean you have to be the one to solve it. And that also doesn't mean you have to be the one to deal with it and deal with the projection of others, which by the way, we should never project our problems onto other people. But some people do, unfortunately. I, I don't personally think it's, you, that's not how you handle things, but some people do. And you can say, hey, I don't have to take that projection so you can work out your problems. You know what I mean? You don't need to work out your problems on you or they to you. <laughs> so then we have it in reverse. Now reverse is super clean and simple. It's just this idea of walking away from it. So you're gonna just say, I'm moving away. I'm moving away from this conversation. Um, funny enough, Eight of Cups often refers to this idea of moving forward, which is great. Uh, like literally like a trip or physically moving location. Um, that in itself is your own decision. We're not talking about that specifically. This is just more you saying like, I don't really care who says what or trying to even win this argument myself. This isn't going to add up really in the grand scheme of things. And because I understand where everyone's coming from, it gives me a better viewpoint to have that sort of epiphany click to let go. So you're going to let go of it. You're going to just be like, okay, bye, whatever. You don't want to, what about this? And what about this last engaging line? Okay, goodbye. Because it's not going to go anywhere. So again, not really that big deal. Just a confrontation with some, a group of people all having their perspective viewpoint. I'm just going to double check. It doesn't feel like it's focused on you. Yeah, I'm told it's not focused on you at all. So it's not like a group of people going after you. It's just everyone in a heated discussion. And you're just going to walk away as we just talked about before. Now keep that concept in mind when we have what's interacting over here in the Six of Swords in reverse and the Page of Cups in reverse, um, upright. So over here we have the Page of Cups representing this idea of good news. So my spirit guide said that this is the representation for you of hope. So here we start out more towards the beginning of the month and you being like, you know what, enough is enough. 
and you're feeling empowered, you're making changes, you're even making with changes with how you're interacting with things you don't like and interacting with things you do like. And having a better understanding of what can benefit you, how it can benefit you, how you can navigate that to benefit you, and understanding what can benefit you with how you interact with things that don't benefit you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a win-win. But there's an evolution to this empowerment. And towards the end of the month, let me just double check when. I'm told around the 17th of December. Um, then we have an, um, uh, this sense of like good news. Wait, do they actively know what the good news is? Yeah, okay, they, they do actively. So there's going to be something that you're aware of. And you want to hear from this good news. You want to have this situation. Is it an opportunity? It's not an opportunity, but it's good news. That's all I'm hearing. But the point is, when you hear about this thing, you're really going to be excited about. It is a representation of hope. You've gone beyond just saying enough is enough and setting up some boundaries for yourself with other people, as well as setting some sort of um, casting a line of like expectations that you would like. I expect to be treated treated well I expect to have my freedom I expect to have x y and z to well now that I'm in a different headspace and I finally can breathe and think and I'm not just trying to take what's mine but I just have it I'd like to dream I'd like to add to that I can think I can feel and this is representing that next stage that sense of hope now you are going to get there let me just double check yes you're going to get there okay cool I'm just always checking with my spirit guides, by the way. But we have the Six of Swords going into the Page of Cups. And the Six of Swords uh, is being read upright. Um, as If you're familiar with my tarot training course, sometimes it's being read in reverse. Sometimes it's being read upright. It's just circumstance, situation by situation, reading by reading. So it's in reverse in order to face and interact and let me know these two cards are interacting. But it's not being read as the in reversed um, situation. So as you can tell, this individual is successfully making their way over to this good news. Okay. However, here's the problem. As you can see, their boat is slowing down. They're not really able to get to where they want to as easily as quickly. The waters are rough, but the main problem is we have these swords poking holes in the boat. We have an extra carrier. The weight is only going to make the boat sink more and make water come through it even faster. It's a big pain, essentially. My spirit guide said that you are going to realize and need to realize and exercise realizing that when you have the opportunity to not have these things slow down your boat, so um, I don't, I don't want to be too like, I'm trying to avoid sensitive topics uh, just for everyone's comfort levels. But an example would be, and I want to, and I want to say it, it's circumstance by circumstance. I'm not making a labeled statement here, but a good example would be like, let's say someone puts you in a position to make you feel like you have to take care of them. And this is letting you know, no, someone else could take care of them, or they have more capabilities on their own and they're sort of on purpose putting you more in a situation than is necessary again this is so case by case i want to be absolutely clear um but that's like an example of something slowing down your boat it's that you have more freedom and more ability to do what you want when you want and 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 go towards your path but it's this illusion around you that you think you have to carry the load of like this could be others maybe tasks or activities it's this idea that there's part of you that thinks, well, if I don't do it, I'm not a good person, or this is what's obligated of me. But the reality is, what you're not realizing is, other that might be other people's jobs, that that's their problem, and they should actually be in doing it, and you're not responsible for them. Maybe there's more opportunity for help, and this isn't even like a, a negative thing. Somebody is waiting in the background to be like, oh, yeah, I'll help out. Not a problem. And the other person who's receiving help is like, oh, I'm fine being um, taken care of by someone else. That's fine. And there's more. It doesn't have to always be an aggressive thing of being like, no, I'm done with this type of thing. But whatever it is, it's this idea that you don't need to carry this load anymore. We're going to put this off the side. You have more help around you and there are more opportunities and there is more of a possibility of saying no than you're allowing yourself to realize and accept. And because of that, once you're like, okay, get this out. You know what? I do have that option. 
This is going to speed up that, that good news, sparking that hope, that excitement. And then this is what's really beautiful. That good news leads into the Eight of Swords. And before this, I forgot to mention, my spirit guide told me that the Eight of Cups and the Eight of Swords were very closely intertwined. Not just because they're eights, <laughs> matching eights, but the Eight of Swords in reverse is stunning. This is somebody who finally, and notice if you sense a pattern here, because that's how tarot works. There's always patterns. Everything's running into each other for a reason. This is somebody who realizes, oh, all of those limitations I thought I had, all those things I thought holding me down, keeping me back, all this jazz, were just a figment of my imagination. Even if other people made me think that, I chose to believe it. I chose to give over my power. I chose to set boundaries. I chose to believe this was all there is. And in reverse, this is an individual who goes, wait a minute. I've seen the light. I have tons of options. Wait a minute. There's no limitation at all. Everything is in completely in my control and I can change things how I want it to be. And because of that, they are then in turn free and set free. So this good news, we've got this coming towards this individual who's ready to receive this good news because they freed themselves of all of that limitation as we talked about over here. See that? what This would, to me, would be a good example of when you're reading tarot, getting a confirmation card of saying that this evidence is so on the nose of the same genre and context of everything we were talking about here that lets you know you're reading the cards correctly. It's like an additional confirmation thing as I talk about my tarot training course. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you just excited to have your month of like freedom and just empowerment and understanding and realizing you're responsible for you and you have more options and help than you may realize and know? So uh, please leave a comment, leave a like, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I'm wishing you the best. I'm wishing you a very beautiful, best December. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.